What's up, everybody? Proto Hype here, reporting in live from the Icon Collective Music Production School in LA. Um, what we're going to be going over today is preverb or reverse reverb, as I like to call it. Um, so, reverse reverb is very useful when you have a vocal and you want to mix it up and add a unique style to it and help it really just blend in more with the mix. So, here's the effect that we have. Um, we'll be working on the a cappella from my track Glitch Stomp. You see me moving like so as you can see it adds its own little intro to the vocal instead of it just coming in very dry and just kind of sitting on top of the mix unproperly. Um, so what we're going to be doing is since this first part already has the preverb on it, we're going to be going to the second verse and adding preverb to that. So here's what it sounds like right now. Once upon a time a youngin from the south got himself into some trouble. So there it is. Let's get started on this. Uh, so what the first thing you need to realize when you're using preverb is that you only need to select a very small amount of the clip to create the long reverb. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to zoom in here and select this very first syllable. What's up? What's up? Command C, copy that, and then we're going to create a new audio track, Command T. What we're going to do is we're going to bring this down below here, and here's what we have. So it's very short and sounds kind of awkward right now, but you'll see how it works out. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to my lunchbox over here and bring up the uh, audio effects and add a reverb directly on the track. So um, an important thing to remember about the reverb on this is that it has to be a very wet sound. So in other words, it has to have lots of reverb um, and very little vocal. So what we're going to do is we're going to crank the dry wet of the reverb up to about 90%. Um, I like to add the quality up to high. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the EQ, take off the high cut and add the low cut because you don't want any kind of low frequencies in that preverb that's coming in. It'll just add random muddiness to your mix that you don't need. So we'll bring this uh, low cut over here to where we get just some, some high end of the reverb. Um, the last step we're going to do on the vocal is add this to bring this decay time up to about 10 seconds. Um, you can always go overboard with this and then cut it off. So there's really not an exact amount of time as long as it's fairly long. So here's what it sounds like with the, the reverb. So it's starting to get there. Um, the next step that you need to do is you need to record that audio to a new track and make that its own audio clip with the reverb included. So what we're going to do is we're going we're to create a new audio track, Command T. Open this up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take this external input right here. Um, if, if your Ableton doesn't have this, up already, all you need to do is go to the I.O. down here and it brings it up. So we'll take this external input and put it to 2 audio because that's the track that we want the uh, recording to come from. So once I hit record on this, um, any kind of audio coming out of this track will be recorded to this track. So what we'll do is we'll turn this off and we will solo this track so we have the recording going on. So go up here, hit the circle, and then press play and you will get your audio going. Now it's important to let it record all the way out so you get all of the reverb tail. So now that you have that, you don't need this track anymore. So you can delete that. So here's what our recorded sounds like. Now usually when you record this, since the, the reverb is so wet, it's a pretty small, um, pretty, pretty low volume clip. So what I like to do is go into the clip volume in itself and crank it up. I don't know, maybe you have 10 dB, so it's loud enough. So it's looking like pretty equal to the volume of the vocal track above. So one of the last steps we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to reverse it. So go into this clip right here, click reverse, and you've got a reversed clip right there. So then what we're going to do is we're going to bring it over to the beginning of this, match it up so it's pretty close. Sometimes overlapping it really helps it out um, so that they kind of blend into each other pretty well. And we will hear what this sounds like. Once upon a time, a youngin from the south. So that's pretty much it. We might even bring this over a little bit so that they're matching up. And then another thing I like to do, just an additional unnecessary thing maybe, is you go into the envelope right here, click volume, and create your own little ramp of volume. Doesn't make it a little bit better like that. So do that, and we'll hear how this sounds.
once upon a time a youngin from the south. That's about it. We can actually probably turn this down. Once upon a time a youngin from the south. So that's about how that one goes. Some some extra tricks is you can go in here and you can maybe chop up some audio so you get a little bit of glitchy fragments going on here. This is just some things that I like to do. You're welcome to experiment with whatever kinds of things you think might sound pretty cool on this. So let's hear how that sounds. Once upon a time a young pretty cool. All right, so that's about it. Um, so this is Protohype signing off for the Icon Collective Music Production School. Hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, please just let me know. All right, guys, good luck.